Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Book Sync and Paper. If you're new, thanks for joining me today and I'm glad that you're here and I hope you'll become a subscriber and a regular viewer and commenter because I love the comments that all of you share. Today's video is probably going to be a bit long um, and I put off filming this because it takes some time and it took some time for me to pull these books from the shelves. But what I want to do today is to revisit my book haul from last December and pick a book to read next month. Now, you may recall I did a holiday advent gift exchange with my daughter, Megan. So there were 25 days of book giving or bookish related giving. So some of the things that I'm not obviously sharing today are the bookish gifts. I got a necklace, some tea. I got, um, oh my goodness. Uh, I think I got, um, Oh, I got a video of the a DVD of the 13th tale and a DVD player to be able to play it. I got the most beautifully, magnificently made book, handmade scrapbook uh, from her, which made me cry, sob, ugly, cry, tears. Um, I got, uh, let me think what else, a locket, I think I said, a little book locket, uh, lots of adorable, adorable things. There were so many of them, it's hard for me to remember them all, and I got a lot of books. And so I'm going to share with you first what I've read and eliminating off the list and show you how I did. And then I'm going to show you what is left to read and pick something from that stack to read in the month of December. So let's get started. Okay, I'm not doing this in order of receiving them because that would just be too complicated. But one of the books that I did receive was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. And I don't have that currently. It's being lent out to, I don't know who has it now, either Megan's friend uh, from school who teaches or my son, I'm not certain, but it is um, somewhere being read by people who I hope are loving it. So that one I did check off my list. One of the books I'm currently reading actually did not come from the Advent Book Exchange. It's A Merry, Very Victorian Christmas by Janet Emily Demarest. And this is one that I'm just getting through little by little this month and just enjoying it. I may be reading it in December also. Uh, but this was a book I purchased after going to Colonial Williamsburg last year for a week and seeing this and another book that I thought were really fun and that I would enjoy. And that other book is A Christmas, Christmas A Biography by Judy. Judith Flanders. So this one also showed up in the gift shops there and I found it uh, to be exciting and interesting. Um, there's a lot of history about Christmas and how some of these elements occurred and they're both similar, but yet one is focused more on a particular time period and this one is focused more on, you know, some more current uh, experiences like in the wartime and different times like that. So I do want to look at this in December. So this is definitely one that I'm going to focus on. So I'm going to eliminate that from the other list because it was purchased by me. Okay, let's talk about the books I did read. Uh, so I got these cute little books, Doggy Yoga and Kitty Yoga, and I did read those. Those were adorable and cute and a fast read and so sweet. I did include this, but because it's a book, but I got a tarot deck to go and I have pulled cards from this and looked at it. It's really adorable and it's, um, you know, it's small and compact. So that was fun. This one was one of my Lanyap books and I'm including it in what I've read because I already have read it and I might reread it in December. You never know, but that's The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I have read this years ago and it is something I would consider rereading. It's about a family. I've talked about this before. It's about a family uh, after World War I who's struggling financially and have always been very affluent and they live in this great mansion. And uh, I thought it was a doctor. Uh, it is Dr. Faraday. One time, I think I called him a lawyer, but Dr. Faraday comes to help them and to look in on them and to see if they're well. And some things are happening in the house and they are not well. <laughs> and, uh, 
and everybody is very, very frightened. And I adored this one. The Harry Potter Wizards Unite official game guide. I have looked at this multiple times. I can't say I've read it cover to cover, but I have really read most of it. I do love this game. I do still play, although I don't give myself uh, as much time to play. During COVID, it actually became easy to play in your home, which made it nice because it's actually kind of a virtual reality kind of wandering game. Um, uh, I do enjoy it a lot. So I'm not counting that as a possible read in December book because I've pretty much gleaned a lot from it and continue to do that. It's more of a guide rather than a, a read. Another one was Sherry Lapina, An Unwanted Guest. I loved this book and I didn't own it. And so, uh, but I had read it. I've read it before. It would be a perfect December read though, really. It's a possibility. A graphic novel, Persepolis, the story of a childhood by Marjane Satrapi. I did read this. I enjoyed it very, very much. It was a very heartfelt story, memoir about her family's experience in Iran during the, um, during the revolution and Tehran in particular and her growing up in that environment and how it changed her and her family and I, I really highly recommend this. Even if you're not into graphic novels, it was a great one for me. I don't read a lot of them, but it's really well done. Jojo Moyes, The Last Letter to Your Lover, I actually took with me. I had gotten it before I left and took with me to Williamsburg, read it on the flight and, and the times I had extra space and I finished it while I was there. I really enjoyed this a lot. It's a dual timeline historical fiction and current plot in England. And it's about a, um, a couple who... Um, met in the past and got close and their story. And then it's a couple, it's a story about a woman who finds some letters in a newspaper office and realizes there was some sort of love affair that happened. And she wants to know more about what happened to these people because the letters stop. It's very interesting, very well done, very emotional read. Uh, I really enjoyed it. The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. We both exchanged this with each other. Got to this really quickly. I think I read this in January uh, at last year or this year. And uh, oh, I love Ann Patchett. This was a five-star read for sure. And The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. I read this last winter, enjoyed it thoroughly. This is my favorite Jennifer McMahon so far, and I do want to read a couple more of hers. It was an easy read. It was a beautiful read for the winter. I, I, yeah, it, it was a, it's a ghosty, creepy, uh, haunting kind of a book. Okay, so let's talk about what I didn't get to. <sighs> All right, first, Upstream by Mary Oliver which I'm surprised by. These are essays rather than poems. She's a beautiful writer, beautiful poet, passed away, broke my heart when we lost her. And I think partly I'm resistant to reading some Mary Oliver because it, there won't be any more. But this one is connected, essays connected to nature and our environment. And one of the quotes from it is, I had to go out into the world and see it and hear it and react to it before I knew at all who I was, what I was, what I wanted to be. I love that. So that's definitely a possibility. I'm embarrassed to say I still haven't gotten to this. Sing Unburied Sing. <sighs> Jasmine Ward, uh, beautiful work. I've heard National Book Award winner, uh, part ghost story, part road novel. It's about a man who, I think it's a man who goes to the penitentiary and the family makes the trip to visit and no excuse. So there's that possibility. The Good Daughter by Alexandra Burt. I did start this year on one of my readathons, I think. I did not get very far into it. And so I put it down and I can't remember. It wasn't because I didn't like it. I put it down in favor of finishing something else, I think, before the end of the readathon, like a something shorter. I don't do a lot of readathons anymore because I really struggle with them. But this is a thriller about a girl who goes back to her childhood home in Texas and her mother is um, 
not well and she discovers some things about the town and her mother i think that she didn't realize had happened or were happening or are happening so that's a possibility if i'm in the mood for a thriller uh, today will be different by maria semple which is uh, an author i like i love where'd you go bernadette and this one is about eleanor flood who is trying to like sort of get back in the groove of taking care of herself and getting dressed and showering and being with her family. And then she discovers some things about her life that she didn't know were true uh, before. I, I really am curious about this one. It says it's wildly funny, unflinching exploration of motherhood, middle age, faith, and the risks of facing up to our former selves so we can truly begin living. Okay. A Pagan's Nightmare, <laughs> which is by Ray Blackston. I almost picked up. I still have the tag from the Advent Exchange in it to use as a bookmark. Uh, this is a possibility. It's humor, obviously. Um, it's kind of apocalyptic and uh, there are like very few pagans remaining in the world and things are changing for pagans and uh, it just sounds hilarious and funny. It might be a great thing to read in the month of December. That's a short one. Karen Slaughter, Cop Town. I've never read anything by Karen Slaughter. Megan has. I've wanted to. Uh, this one is a thriller. It is a Will Trent novel and this happens. There's a murder. Oh wait, this is not a Will Trent novel. Take that back. It's a Kate Murphy detective novel. Uh, so she gets a new partner and she goes off to find this killer that is about a death of a cop. Yeah, I love the color of this. It's a great cover. So, okay, possibility. With or Without You by Dominica Ruta a memoir about her life with her mother, who was apparently a drug addict and sometimes dealer. And they had a really challenging life. And it sounds fascinating. And yeah, I remember reading this at the last when I got it, but the last bit of this from the this excerpt from the book says, but the last time I saw her, she weighed more than 200 pounds and her arms were encrusted with purulent sores. And she loved me so much that she couldn't help hating me that at least once a week, I still dream she's trying to kill me. Yeah, that's a dark one. That's a dark one. So I guess I haven't gotten to that and how to tell if your cat is plotting to kill you, Sheldon. Uh, there's a pull-out poster inside. This would be a quick, fun read. It's a bit of a graphic novel. Um, it, not a bit. It's a graphic novel. Uh, so this would be fun and quick. And if I were really focusing on getting these off the list, that would be a good idea. I'm feeling good about how many I read so far. Um, I think I read more than... I didn't. So that's important. Three, four, eight, nine, ten. Um, yeah, I think I did. I think I did pretty well. What am I going to eliminate that I will not probably read in December? I hate to say it, but I probably will not read Mary Oliver in December just because I'm reading some other nonfiction and and so I'm gonna kind of try to focus on holiday nonfiction in December and actually I'm actually I, I'm trying to figure out what I want to read in December and a lot of it is holiday like mysteries and stuff that I'm kind of focusing on and none of these fit in that category but that's okay I'm just saying that's kind of what I'm thinking right now hmm I'm probably not going to read Jasmine Ward because I'm looking for something light and this is not light. And I'll tell you, um, 
with or without you is also not light. So I feel like I could eliminate that, but maybe look at that in January. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a possibility for January or February. What am I in the mood for these days? It's interesting. I've really been, whew, I've really been a little challenged to stay on track with some things this month. October was such a great reading month that November is, has been a little bit slower. And I tried again to tackle this big book that I'm not sure if I like. So there's that. I want something that I'll finish. That's the first thing. I want something that I'll finish. And, uh, so I'm pretty sure I could finish and want to finish this. It's funny. And I think it would be cute to read in, in the first couple of days of December. So I'm going to add how to tell if your cat is plotting to kill you to my list in December. So there's that. And I'd like to take one more. I wonder if, let me see if I can tell if the pagan's nightmare has anything holiday in it. Looks really funny, but I think not quite yet. No, not sure I want a thriller in December. I just, again, I'm kind of looking at light things. So that it would eliminate the good daughter and cop town. I think I'm going to go with today will be different. It sounds like a um, feel good kind of uh, personal development kind of thing. And it, I think it'll be fast. It's gotten some good buzz uh, from some folks. It, I think it'll be a quick read. Yeah. So I'm going to choose let me get them both. So I'm going to choose Today Will Be Different by Maria Semple and How to Tell If Your Cat is Plotting to Kill You by, I don't know who. <laughs> I guess it's, uh, that's interesting too. I don't guess there's an author. It's published by, I guess it's by The Oatmeal. It says it's by The Oatmeal. And it's published by Andrew McKeel Publishing in Kansas City, Sydney, and London. So that's fun. Uh, so <laughs> today will be different. And how to tell if your cat is plotting to kill you will be the reads for me for December from last year's haul, as well as continuing the very, very, a merry, very Victorian Christmas and looking at Christmas, a biography. And I don't necessarily feel like I need to read these cover to cover either just to get a little bit of something when I'm looking for some holiday spirit. So I, I mean, I could, I guess, read this one, um, the history of Christmas front to back. Certainly this one is more of a, let me look at this one. I'm looking for a recipe or something in particular or a whatever. So yeah, so I'll keep on those and I'll read those other two. And then I, again, have some quick, I think, Christmassy mysteries that I'm going to pick up that I've been collecting for a bit of time now. Okay, thanks for joining me on this revisit of my book haul for December of 2019. And uh, I'm hoping to not haul so many books in December of 2020. And generally speaking, I'm looking at um, doing a bit of a purge again soon. So I'll let you know when that is um, underway. But I really appreciate you subscribing, commenting, sharing, being with me from last year until now. This, uh, this December will be my, um, the end of my, well, no, the end of my full two years. I started in December of 2018, but right at the end of the year on New Year's Eve, actually, I think was my first book to video. So this will mark uh, the end of two full years. And um, so, yeah, at, at the end of December, I guess we'll have a happy anniversary celebration together. <laughs> uh, but I, again, appreciate all of you 
very, very much. I love sharing with you and talking about books and I'll keep doing that as much and as often as I can. And as always, happy reading. Bye.